In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the making of alcohol using a process called fermentation. Fermentation involves three main ingredients, a source of sugar, yeast and water. In this video, the source of sugar will come from bananas. I've been careful to leave the bananas for long enough so that they ripen. This ensures that the starch present inside has time to break down to more simple sugars that are more easily metabolised by the yeast cells. In order to promote the process of fermentation further, I will also be adding 250 grams of glucose. The bananas and the glucose will be blended together and added to a special glass vessel called a demijohn. This is a total of 4.5 litres in volume. The banana sugar mixture will be added to this until it gets to 3.375 litres. And then the remainder of the volume will be made up using water. So I'll start by adding the bananas and sugar to the demijohn. Three point three seven five litres of the banana and sugar mixture has now been added to the glass demijohn. I will now make the volume up to a total of four point five litres using spring water. Now I'm deliberately using spring water as opposed to tap water or distilled water because spring water naturally contains trace minerals which will help the yeast cells to multiply. In particular, in the case of yeast, the recommendation is to use spring water with a reasonably low pH value. So having been to the supermarket and looked at the different spring waters on offer, this one has a pH of 7.2, which was the lowest one available. I will now make sure that the mixture is properly mixed together. So I'll put a bung on the top and now invert the demijohn a few times. The process of inversion also ensures that sufficient dissolved oxygen is present to promote the multiplication of the yeast cells. Finally, I will add the yeast. There are many different types of yeast. The particular yeast I will be using here is called Bavarian wheat yeast, which is known to work particularly well in the case of making banana beer. Only a small amount of the yeast is needed because during the process of fermentation, it will naturally multiply up. This particular type of yeast is called top fermenting uh, and the yeast is added to the top of the mixture. That ensures access to oxygen in the initial phases in order to allow rapid multiplication. Finally, to ensure anaerobic oxygen-free conditions I will add an air trap to the top. The purpose of this air trap is to ensure that carbon dioxide can leave the vessel, but that oxygen cannot come back in, thus maintaining anaerobic conditions. 
I will now add a small sample of universal indicator to the water inside the air trap. And you should be able to clearly see that initially, as expected with pure water, it has gone green. And that green colour will clearly, when I leave it, diffuse all the way to fill the water in the air trap. I will now leave this vessel to ferment for one week. During that time, the yeast will multiply up and will metabolise the sugars in the vessel to make ethanol and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide will pass out through the air trap. Carbon dioxide is a non-metal oxide and therefore has acidic properties. Therefore, after one week of fermentation, we should expect the green colour of the universal indicator to go an orangish yellow colour, indicating the production of the weak acid, carbon dioxide. Finally, because the process of fermentation involves yeast, which is a living organism, and specifically the enzyme zymase, which is inside the yeast, the temperature will be very important. The optimum temperature for this enzyme is 30 degrees Celsius. Therefore, during the week-long fermentation process, the demijohn will sit on a special mat that has a thermostat that will maintain the temperature at exactly 30 degrees Celsius. I will now leave the vessel for one week in order to allow fermentation to take place. The fermentation experiment has now been left for three days. You can already see a large amount of froth has appeared at the top of the fermentation vessel. This is caused by the carbon dioxide produced during fermentation. You can clearly see that carbon dioxide bubbles are coming through the air trap fairly rapidly. Remember the purpose of the air trap is to allow carbon dioxide to leave the vessel but to prevent oxygen from entering, thus maintaining anaerobic conditions. Finally, you can see that already after three days the universal indicator in the air trap has turned from green to an orangish yellow colour which is indicative of the acidic gas carbon dioxide. In this part of the video we are going to look at the fermentation vessel after one week of fermentation. You can see from the airlock that there is no carbon dioxide being produced, so there's no bubbling, so the fermentation has clearly ended. The light orange colour that you can see uh, in the universal indicator uh, indicates the presence of a weak acid, in this case carbon dioxide. There is a layer of material at the top of the vessel. This is just the undigested uh, material from the banana mixture that the yeast was not able to digest. We've then got a layer here which will be containing the alcohol that we will remove in a moment. And right at the very bottom you might be able to see there's a layer and that is the dead yeast cells. So the fermentation uh, has gone on for a week. Uh, the yeast during that time has taken the sugar in this container and converted it into ethanol and carbon dioxide. Once the ethanol percentage gets up to around 15%, the yeast dies and it settles out on the bottom of the vessel. Notice that we've got much more yeast at the end than we had at the start. And that's because the yeast has obviously multiplied up over the course of the last week. In this section of the video, I'm going to distill the fermented banana mixture using the chemistry department's well-known distillation kit, which you can see on the desk in front of you. 
So just moving forward, at the bottom I've got a Bunsen burner, obviously to provide heat. Then I have a metal gauze, that is just to dissipate the heat from the Bunsen burner and apply it more evenly across the bottom of the glass round bottom flask. In the round bottom flask you can see that I have a side arm on the right uh, and that's just open to the air, you can see there. And that is just to prevent a buildup of pressure inside the flask. Moving up the flask, you can see that I have this long distillation column, inside of which are hundreds of glass beads. And those go all the way up there. The glass beads will ensure that the ethanol will continually boil and then condense several times on the way up the column. When ethanol and water are heated, the ethanol does boil off at around 79 degrees C, uh, but at that high temperature, some water molecules will also evaporate. And so there will inevitably be a mixture of ethanol and water. And so this process of continually condensing and then boiling the ethanol water mixture ensures that we get ethanol that is as pure as possible when we get to the top of the column. It's not possible to make 100% pure ethanol. Uh, I think the maximum percentage using this method is around 96%. Uh, and that's what we call an azeotrope. Okay, so it's a mixture uh, that boils and condenses with the same ethanol composition. So azeotrope literally means constant boiling mixture. And so if we move further up the column, you can see that we've got a mercury thermometer. This is just to track the temperature. As I mentioned, the key temperature that we're looking out for is 79 degrees C, which is the boiling point of ethanol. The boiling point of water, of course, is 100 degrees C. And then if you follow that orange tube to the right, uh, you can see that I have uh, a smaller condenser, uh, and that just ensures that there will be no pressure buildup of gas in the apparatus. And hopefully, the ethanol that we make will drip down past this tap and collect in this beaker. Having set up the distillation experiment, I will now switch on the Bunsen burner, carefully boil the fermented banana mixture in the bottom. As soon as it starts boiling, I will remove the heat to ensure that only the ethanol boils, travels up the column, and is then collected in the beaker you saw at the top. Whenever the boiling becomes quite vigorous, I simply take the heat away and let it settle back down again. And that ensures that the ethanol boils off while minimising the evaporation of water. Now that the apparatus has warmed up, you can clearly see the ethanol dripping into the beaker. So I've now switched off the Bunsen burner and we'll now wait until the bubbling subsides and then we'll look at our sample of ethanol. In the final part of this demonstration, I will prove that the liquid that we've made is indeed ethanol. So if I show it to the camera, uh, you can see uh, that we've got a fair amount of liquid uh, and it's quite clear and that should be about 95% pure ethanol. And to prove it, I'm going to burn it. So I have here a large watch glass 
Uh, so it's just a curved piece of glass, uh, one this large is often called a clock glass, on a heat proof mat. And I'm going to add the ethanol, like that. There we are. The ethanol is burning. You may be able to see the flame, but you'll be able to see it even better if I switch off the lights. You have to be quite careful with ethanol because it burns with a very pale flame. <laughs> 